Okay, making pancakes might seem like a pretty simple endeavor, but depending on the recipe, the list of ingredients or variables can be quite long. For example, we have flour, fillings, sugar, eggs, bananas, chocolate chips, berries. So the list goes on and on and on and on. And today we're gonna talk about that. I can talk about pancakes all day long, but before I subject you to that, I want to let you know that this video is going to be focused on your first machine learning model section in the Kaggle Intro to Machine Learning course. So let's take our pancake data frame and think about how we might go about training a decision tree model on our pancake data. And when we do this, two things that we want to consider at the beginning are our prediction target and our features. Let's start with a prediction target. First of all, what is a prediction target? Well, if I wanted to use a very circular definition, I would tell you it's the target of our prediction. To use a vocabulary word from earlier in the course, our prediction target is our output. In other words, our prediction target is the thing we're trying to use our model to predict. And when we think about it in terms of our pancake data, our prediction target is our rating on a 10 point continuous scale. Now this leaves us with features. So what are features? Well, features are all of the variables that we think could be contributing to our prediction. So in the case of pancake data, our features are all of the variables, the recipe components that we think are responsible for contributing to a rating. Now we'll go into model selection and, and feature engineering in a later course, but because we have a numerical prediction target and all of our features are numeric, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two different sets of data. One will be a column containing just our prediction target, our rating on a continuous 10 point scale, and the other will be all of our features, all of our pancake ingredients, and they'll be set up in their own data frame. That's a lot of new vocabulary, so let's jump right in and see what it would look like using our pancake cakes data. We're going to create a series, which we'll refer to as lowercase y, in order to represent our prediction target, which is our pancake rating. So we would run code that looks like this, y equals pancakes dot rating. To create our features data frame, we'll create an object called capital X that contains our features by running a couple chunks of code. The first chunk will be a list with the column names we want to include as features. We'll create that by running pancakes underscore features equals, we've got a square bracket, and then each in quotes, we've got flour, baking powder, salt, sugar, milk, butter, eggs and syrup, and closing our square bracket. The second chunk of code will be where we create capital X, which is the subset of our pancakes data frame that only contains our features. To get X, we'll run X equals pancakes, and then in square brackets, we've got pancakes underscore features. If we want to make sure that capital X contains all of our features, we can call in our pandas skills picked up in our exploratory data analysis section to make sure that our pancakes features are all there. And we do this by running things like head parentheses, columns, and describe parentheses. Now that we have our features and prediction target, we can build a model using scikit-learn. The basic steps for building our model are to make sure that we've defined the model and then fit the model. We'll get into this a bit more in the next section. So the lesson materials have walked us through splitting our data into a target, what we're trying to predict, and in this case that's housing prices, and features, which are the variables we'll consider when we're trying to come up with a model that predicts our housing prices. So we represent our target with a lowercase y, like this, y equals melbourne underscore data dot price. That doesn't print anything out, but we can think back to ways we've printed information to the console and come up with a way to explore what's in our lowercase y variable or our target variable. Now remember it's price, so we can do lowercase y dot head and what that's going to do is print out the first five rows of data that we have stored in the variable y. And what we're seeing is the first five values of prices for various houses in our data set. Now our features, which are a subset of variables from our housing data set, and in this case only include numerical values, are represented by an uppercase x like this. Now it's a two-step process. First we're going to create a list of our features, here it's melbourne underscore features equals, and then each term in quotes you see rooms, bathroom, land size, latitude, and longitude. And then we can explore that capital X variable, which now contains numerical features, by doing capital X dot describe. Now remember the difference between describe and head is that head is going to give us a look into the first five rows of our data set, whereas describe is going to give us summary statistics. 
And so here we can get a broad overview of what we have within each of our numerical variables within Melbourne features. Now I want to zero in on some distinct steps in the machine learning process. We touched on these a bit in one of our earlier lessons, and those steps are defining our model, fitting our model, making predictions, and validating our model. So at this point, we're going to talk about defining our model. And we've only talked about decision trees, and maybe you know of other models that we could use, but we're definitely going to use a decision tree. And in this case, we're going to use decision tree regressor. And when we're defining our model, we're basically saying, hey computer, I want you to use this Python code to define my model. When we fit our model, we're taking the model we've decided to use, in this case a decision tree regressor, and applying it to the data we have in order to pull out patterns according to specific rules outlined by our model. So here we see this in Melbourne underscore model dot Fit. And then the data that we're passing here is going to be capital X and lowercase y. Now remember capital X is our features, that, that subset of the Melbourne data we have, and y is going to be our price data. Now we're going to make predictions. And we've added some print statements so that it's a little bit easier to see what's going on and understand. When we make predictions, we're saying, hey computer, we've told you which model to use and we've built that model on our training data and now we wanna use it to make predictions. So in this case, what we're doing is we're looking to predict the price of houses. And we're going to do that by running Melbourne underscore model dot predict. And then it's gonna be capital X dot head. And so this is going to show us the first five predictions. And you might look at this and think, but it doesn't say price. So we've got our rooms, our bathroom, land size, latitude, and longitude. And then running in a horizontal line across the bottom, we have the housing price predictions that were created using the model that we trained. Now let's take a minute to compare our prediction values with the values in our original data frame. And there are a couple of ways to do this, but we're just going to run lowercase y dot head. What do you notice here? All right, y'all, between what you've read on the Kaggle Learn Intro to Machine Learning course for the Your First ML Model section, along with what we've covered in this video, we've got five main points I'd like to talk about now. One, we can use dot notation to select the prediction target. Two, the single column we select using dot notation is stored as a series. Three, we can select our features using a column list. Four, we can review the first five rows of our data using the head function. And five, we can use the decision tree regressor function from the scikit-learn library to create our model. Before we close out this video, I want to take a moment and tell you what a great job you're doing. I feel like we're making a lot of progress with our machine learning skills, and I'm really excited to see what we get up to next. As you work through the coding example in the Your First Machine Learning Model section on Kaggle, be sure to take some time to think about what's happening when you train the model on your data, and definitely take a really, really close look at your results. All right, y'all, when you're ready, let's head on over to the next lesson where we're going to work on validating our model.